hello is the future of analog photography doomed maybe yes because we're all doomed i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding anyway uh let's have a sit down and talk about the future of film photography hashtag film is not dead hashtag keep film alive have most likely contributed in the revival of film photography in the last five years but the most prevalent hashtag in my opinion is hashtag shoot film and stay broke especially thanks to kodak okay i'm not dissing kodak in any way with that but in case you didn't know kodak had to increase their prices for their film stocks once again in january to help with the demand because last year in case you didn't know some some stuff happened and a lot of people had some free time in their hands and some people decided to get into film photography so i can only imagine the increase in demand that they got because from 2015 to 2019 kodak reported that they had double the demand that they normally did prior to that so I can only imagine the demand that they had last year alone. So I completely understand the increase in prices and it only just means that's actually a good thing that they have to do that. But still, now this leads to the main point of this video, which is the average consumer or someone who wants to get into analog photography, but they can't because they are getting priced out, yes. It's a thing, it's really prominent more than ever than I've noticed and it's kind of a problem. Now I moved down to the south of the country near the end of 2019, right before last year which was such a great idea. Um, I've noticed myself how much more expensive it is to shoot film and I'm not sure if it's because of the location but I have noticed in Brighton in particular that analog photography is way way more prominent and popular than it is back in the Midlands. Again everything happens in waves and whatever but yeah development costs are a lot more expensive here it's literally double and I know in London it's like even more in some labs and that's crazy and but at the same time that's because it's so popular <laughs> and the photo lab technicians need the money to be able to afford to keep up the demand and another area and the main area where people are getting priced out is cameras and gear the beauty of owning a film camera is when you look after it and get it serviced it will last you a lifetime so much so that you can pass it on to the next generation that's why right now it seems so hipstery to use your grandparents or your parents old cameras because they have lasted so long because they're so well made that they will last a very long time and that is kind of incomparable to a digital camera which will be considered obsolete in the next three to five years after purchase However, the problem with film cameras, especially with them being produced, is a lot of these places have stopped servicing their cameras, in particular contacts, because contacts don't even service their analog cameras anymore. From what I uh, last check, you can correct me on this, but I do understand that in those cameras, the second the metering system goes, that's kind of it. You just got yourself an expensive paper rate. I mean, there are, you know, third party services that you can go to, but again, it's all a bit of a mess at the moment. And you don't really know who you're going to, and let alone even be able to find someone local to you to get your camera serviced, especially if the tools and the materials and the components aren't available because the company aren't manufacturing them anymore, which is a bit, bit shit in my opinion. And that area with camera companies isn't looking that great. It kind of depends how you see it with all the different news that is coming out. Because for example, Nikon very recently announced the sad news that they are discontinuing the production of the F6, which is their last film camera, which is a massive shame. And I also believe that they are moving their production from Japan to Thailand. So we don't know, they might bring it back because it's not, you know, it's not the inevitable end of film photography from Nikon, but we just, we just don't know. <laughs> However, this doesn't exactly mean that 
all camera brands have stopped production of their analog cameras. For example, Leica and Hasselblad, I believe, are still going. However, they are extremely, extremely expensive. And to put it bluntly, shooting on film is a bit of a luxury. And sometimes with certain camera models becoming kind of like the hot piece of the month or whatever, um, it can be such a minefield for a newbie photographer to even figure out what they want without being priced out or spending loads of money on a camera that they end up finding doesn't really work for them. So I worry that because we're getting priced out, that there's a lot of people that will feel too, you know, <sighs> broke and insecure or just intimidated to get into analog photography simply because they think they can't afford it. And I say this as somebody who has had to work their ass off to even be able to afford to do analog photography. So I totally understand and I totally empathize with that. Now, I'm really glad that I've made this video now because a month ago I wrote the script for it and quite a lot of stuff has come out about analog photography, which is great. So for example, Ilford announced that they have produced a simple um, point and shoot camera inspired from disposable cameras. Kodak have the same and Lomography have been in the long game with that one as well. And I personally do highly recommend using those kind of cameras if you are getting into film photography because they're cute, they're simple, but most notably Leica even announced that they are coming out with an affordable camera, hopefully this year, which would be absolutely incredible. So these brands are hearing the customers, they are hearing the shooters, and they do understand that people do want affordable analog cameras. And there's absolutely no need not to produce those because the demand is there and it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Now, this all leads to my next point about this video is film stock, as I addressed at the beginning of this video, I know. However, I personally don't believe that film stock is going to just suddenly die out in the next 10 years. And that is simply because of a little industry called the movie industry. And as long as people are still producing celluloid for movies such as Star Wars, then, you know, film is still going to be in production. Also, fun fact about Star Wars, they shot the sequels uh, in 35mm so it can look consistent with the original trilogy. Ooh. <laughs> and also, never fun fact, Breaking Bad was shot completely on 35mm and was rescanned, I think, in 2017 to 4K and will eventually, my assumption, will eventually be scanned to the next highest resolution because they, they knew that show was just going to be a classic. So that's why they shot it on film. Fun facts. But again, it can look a bit shaky in regards to film stock and any being in production. For example, Fujifilm have just discontinued yet another film, whereas Lomography have been coming out with new films over the last five years, most notably their chrome films and their black and white films. And in all honesty, I would love to develop my own film stock, but I have absolutely no idea where I would start with that. But if anyone knows, please let me know, because I would actually love to do that. And just jumping back to a point that I made at the beginning of the video about film processing being so expensive, I've noticed a lot of mail-in photo labs pop up thanks to Miss Rona last year, which I think is absolutely incredible. I think one of the most notable labs is Take It Easy Lab and they seem like a really, really cool lab and seem to be kind of leading the way with mail-in, which can actually be a lot cheaper than just going to a high street shop. But again, I just hope a lot of labs can work out a way to make processing a lot cheaper for people. For example, my lab back in Birmingham, Palm Labs, offer a discount when you come in with bulk films, such as five films, and you get some sort of percentage off, which really worked for me for a while. So I don't know, I'm not, I'm not here to give out business advice to photo labs. <laughs> it's just an idea, it's just a suggestion, but you know, maybe offer a bit of discount just to help ease up a little. Okay, so I messed up with the last clip as the audio was completely unusable and I don't really have time to film it again. 
But to make up for that, here are some photographs that I've taken over the last couple of months as I talk about the last part of this video, which is about 3D printing. I feel like we should be utilising 3D printing in regards to producing new film cameras, and I believe some people are. In regards to all of that and the future of analogue photography, I don't think it's doomed. I think we're pretty good for a while. It's just kind of balancing out a little bit and I think that's all it is. Anyway, that's the end of the video and thank you so much for sticking it out uh, till the end. I totally planned on doing more videos last year but life is just, life was just more crazy than usual so thank you again for sticking it out with me and watching this video and I promise I'll be coming out with a new video very very soon. But in the meantime, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.